This is CNC World, a new perspective. It's a well-known fact that the Netherlands contains an enormous treasury of fine historical organs. Thanks to its special historical conditions, the Netherlands is regarded as the organ garden of Europe. Today, organ making is mainly considered a traditional handmade skill in the Netherlands. Piet Redgiver is a craftsman who has worked his whole life in the field of organ building. He retired earlier this year. Sadly for Piet, neither of his two sons wanted to continue the business. Because of the economic situation and the secularization of the society, there are not so many people go to church anymore. The organ building business declined. There's only half of the employees left. According to the craftsman, the fact now is that less organ builders means there is more work to do. Sometimes people have to be on a waiting list for up to five years to get one made. Yap Yan is an organist. For him, however, a career in organs is just beginning. Yap Yan started organ playing when he was seven years old. Now at the age of 28, he has decided to be an organ consultant. The young man is currently preparing a research report, which stands for the National Training for Organ Advisors in order to preserve and restore the giant instrument industry. To be a good advisor, one must be an organist first, to know the history of organs and be familiar with how to make the instrument. Of course, above all these specific skills, the passion for the instrument is a must. When I, when I speak to to younger people or people from my generation, people that never heard an organ before. And when I take them to, to a place like this, I don't have anything to do to, to convince them because they, they see the instrument and they think, oh, this is terrific. Leo van Doselaar is a world famous organ player. He is also the official organist of this prestigious organ dating from 1643. At a younger age, Yap Yan used to assist the organ master's concert, playing the stop combinations for him so Leo could hear the music effects from the hall. In the Netherlands, there still exists some 20 organ-making companies, of which three enjoy worldwide fame. Flentrop, located in Zandam, about 20 kilometers north of Amsterdam, is one of the best. Um, well, the organ part that you can see here, uh, this, this uh, large part, uh, is uh, the center of the organ. Um, uh, you could call it technical heart. Uh, this is the place where all the pipes are placed on, and it's partly dismantled, so it's, it's, uh, it is a bit higher no, normally. Uh, but what you can see inside here um, is the valves. Uh, the organist keys are pulling on these, uh, these, these threads, and so over here an opening is made, and this opening is filled with wind, from the front to the back. And so all the pipes that are standing on these openings uh, will have wind and will sound. And because you don't want all the pipes at the same moment to be open, we have these sliders. Uh, this way they are closed and this way they are opened. And uh, over there is, is a pulley so you can, uh, you can switch them on or off. And you can see that uh, when the, the holes of course are open, the wind can flow into the pipes. So you could, for instance, have all the sliders closed and this one open and then play a key and then this pipe, for instance, or this pipe will sound and you can play on it. Or you could open another one and have two uh, stops to be combined. In the Netherlands, as in all of Europe, numerous organs were made in the 16th, 17th or 18th centuries. The rediscovered treasured instruments are valuable nowadays. And that is exactly the reason why the Netherlands is acknowledged as the organ garden of Europe. The ancient organs have maintained the sounds of the past. When you hear this, this is a flute, this is a recorder. And it's uh, of 1600. It's incredible. So already then they knew how to imitate uh, this, and, and, and you have a, a trumpet. This is a trumpet of 1519. It's incredible. I mean, how many centuries? It's, it's five centuries. And then a trumpet sounded like this.
are four trumpets. Yeah? And um, so uh, it's still, it was in early times like that, and, and, and still it's very interesting, I think, for, for, for many people. In the 16th century, the Protestant Reformation swept over the Netherlands. Due to its connotation to the old Catholic traditions, the organ sounds were also kicked out of the Protestant church services, which dominated the country. Interesting enough, though banned from the worship ceremonies, organ music was still considered as good entertainment for citizens. However, some 100 years after the clandestine reform, in the mid-17th century, the Dutch regained the use of the organ in church to accompany the singing of Protestant hymns. Back then, the Netherlands had not only some of the best organ-making workshops in Europe, but also imported beautiful instruments from all over the continent. Jaap Jan comes to the factory quite often to get inspiration from first-hand organ-making experience. According to Jaap Jan's observation, this 18th century organ needs a lot of repair, especially its bellows and wind channels. So let's have a look inside the organ. I'll remove this screen here. And I'll also remove the screen in the back. And there is a small ancient technique that can help us in determining the problem. So I won't put the organ on fire, I have to be careful. I would never do this when I was, would be alone with such an ancient instrument, of course. But if we are very careful, so here you can see that the flame is pretty stable. And now I move it slowly in the direction of the wind channel. Well, I think this is a good way of showing that the organ is not completely airtight anymore. In order to restore an organ, it's very important to know its history. For instance, when it was built and what kinds of restorations it has gone through. Obviously, these works are not the favorites of young people anymore. Research shows that only one-third of churches in the Netherlands are still using organs for worship. The Peters Church in Leiden is a perfect place for chamber concerts with luxury space and organ-playing events often held there. Our work here is to co uh, collect information about the old organs, how they are built, and when they are restored to describe all the parts of the organs. So we have here a big archive uh, uh, with all information about the old organs. We uh, share this, uh, this knowledge with the private consultants. In spite of losing ground in church services, organs are not completely fading out of history, at least according to those who love the instrument. So my idea is maybe we have a little bit of a uh, negative uh, feeling about organ music or classical music in general. But I don't think that we will forget this forever. I think in 50 years people will say, hey, that's interesting, the music of Bach or the music of Buxtehude or whatever. Uh, our job is to keep the instruments, as many as possible, in good shape, to preserve what is good so that future generations can rediscover the instrument. This is CNC World, a new perspective.